Let's talk about a cool piece of technology we've got here in the Foundry called NCAPS for encapsulation and screening. NCAPS lets us select for high-performing microbes 100,000 at a time. You may remember artificial selection as the process that gave us dogs and corn. It starts with the genetic variation that happens naturally in every population. Humans look out for the traits that they prefer and then select those traits to grow and propagate. It's evolution, but with humans guiding it on purpose. We can do selection on microbes too when we're looking to cultivate desirable traits, the microscopic version of dogs. And selection can be a powerful strategy for microbes because of their large numbers and diversity. To make this work, we need a way to recognize when a microbe has a desirable trait. In other words, we need to perform a measurement. We need a way to separate microbes on the basis of that measurement, and we need a way to do this at scale in order to effectively sample the diversity that exists in large microbial populations. At Ginkgo, we automate this process with NCAPS. Here's how it works. We start with a microbial culture. We use natural mutagenesis or some other strategy to create diversity in the population. Then we encapsulate the microbes into tiny little hydrogel beads. We call them nanoliter scale bioreactors. You can think of them as very small test tubes. Each hydrogel bead includes a little bit of media and a little bit of room to grow. As the microbes grow in these nanoliter scale bioreactors, they can secrete proteins or make fermentation products, all of which are captured inside the bead. After an incubation period, we use lasers to perform a fluorescence measurement on the beads and then sort them according to the results. From a large initial population, we collect a small number of top performers. You might have heard of other methods that use lasers to sort out individual bacteria like fax, fluorescence activated cell sorting. The key difference here is that fax doesn't package cells with their surrounding media, but NCAPS does. That means NCAPS can allow us to select for traits that go beyond the cell itself and affect the surrounding environment. What kinds of traits can we measure with NCAPS? Growth, fermentation products, protein production, protein binding, cell-cell interactions. In principle, we can select for something with NCAPS if we have a way to measure it using fluorescence. Fluorescence-based assays are pretty common. So for some applications, we find that one already exists. In other cases, we can develop an assay that works in the nanoliter scale format. We have a pretty versatile toolbox for doing NCAPS measurements on complex phenotypes, and we're coming up with new stuff all the time. I saw a cool example of this recently that involves co-encapsulation. We can mix more than one different cell type and perform measurements based on their interaction. In this case, we were selecting for microbes that produce an antibiotic. So we mixed them with microbes that are targeted by the antibiotic. We labeled the target microbes with GFP to produce a fluorescence signal, then selected for beads where the signal dropped. The power of the NCAP system is in the sheer number of beads it can screen. A human scientist could test maybe hundreds of microbes. With conventional lab automation, that number goes to thousands or tens of thousands. With a system like this, we can screen 100,000 or more microbes in a single run. Microbial selection, very much about sheer numbers because we're looking for those rare, high-performing superstars. What kind of R&D projects are good candidates for NCAPs? Well, first of all, NCAPS is a powerful option for those cases where you can't or you don't want to do genetic engineering. For example, you might want to optimize a microbe that will be used for agriculture or for the human microbiome. Second, NCAPS is a great complement to genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is about making focused and intentional changes to a microbial genome. Selection is about trying everything in an unbiased way and seeing what works. We don't know everything about how to optimize performance in a single cell. So NCAPS can boost performance on top of a rational synthetic biology campaign. Finally, I consider NCAPS for unusual microbes that are more difficult to engineer directly. The encapsulation approach is versatile and it works with different cell types. We can do bacteria, yeast, fungi, or even mammalian cells. So there's a good chance it will work for that wild type strain or unusual cell type that no one has ever worked with before. As a biologist, I find the NCAPS technology to be amazing. Screening 100,000 or more nanoliter scale bioreactors at once is mind blowing to me. Natural selection is the most powerful creative force on earth. NCAPS puts a little bit of that power 
into our process for developing more productive and beneficial microbes.